Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Uh, happy Mother's Day. It's good to see everyone here, mothers and otherwise. Uh, would you all please stand to your feet? We're going to do song number 40 to start with in the praise book if you want to follow along, but you probably already know this song. It's called Create in Me a Clean Heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean. Praise books that you have in front of you, and they're all different colors. You said 68? No, that's not it. That's not it? One moment. 65. 65. If you want to follow along with the words to this song, you may already know it. It's called, How Great is Our God, number 65. Trembles at his voice 
name above all names. Name above all Tissues, <laughs> but not yet, not yet. The, my only thing about Mother's Day is so many people take it as a day to be sad. Mm. But look at it this way: if you have a mother to mourn her passing, you have more than some people have ever had. Right. That especially if you had a good, godly mother that loved you, that loved God, that took care of you. Of course, there's nothing wrong with missing her, but that's something to celebrate. A mother like that, not everybody has that. And um, I, I think this was Katie Duff that shared this on Facebook. Aww. Can you read it? If at first you don't succeed, try doing it the way mom told you to do it in the beginning. <laughs> I can honestly say that is something I've had to learn the hard way. Now to the one that's responsible for my short legs and the slight red in my hair, and to the one who gave me her chin and the smile that I get to wear, and to the one that's been there for me since the 25 hour labor to today, from what I'm told, I can't remember, don't ask me. To the one who will ask where she wants to go for lunch today, and oh, wherever is fine, I'm just happy to see everyone, is what she'll say. <laughs> to the one without whom my father would crumble under the weight of his silliness and his work. <laughs> That's right. To the one who knows exactly how to make you feel better, no matter what hurts. To the one to be half of whom I can only hope and pray. And to the epitome of beauty and grace, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. I told you to get your tissues ready. I told you. Thank you, sweetheart. And now we have to try to sing without tears in our eyes. Thanks, Candy. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Somebody I'm very blessed. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes, we do. What do we do with the mic? It's gone. I'm trying to find it. Can you get the uh, the pulpit mic for us? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. That's good. Thank you. Somebody introduce this song, please. Well, Rambo. this is a song written by Dottie Rambo, and it, uh, it it's really what Debbie said a while ago. <laughs> um, it's build my mansion next door to Jesus. Talking about Mama in, in heaven. And she was a good writer, and she, she wrote from the heart. Yes, she did. And so y'all pray that we can say yeah. the words to these songs um, after all of these praises. This song is called Build My Mansion.
wasn't here this morning uh, to do this song because I know how much she loves it uh, to hear this song um, but I do hope that this song blesses your heart um, they always say that a mother understands in a way that nobody else can but um, I, I would tell you that yes that is true but there is one that understands even the things that she can't understand that's for right. you um, the Lord understands everything that you say to him that you feel that's going on in your life and this song is all about that it's called he understands my tears It's hard to believe he still loves me Knowing how wrong I have been When all I can say is I'm sorry When all I
God is so good. Amen. Amen. Y'all got to help me out on this one. You know it. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, ask the Brother John Simmons, Dr. Simmons to come forward and bring our scripture reading this morning. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, ladies, for singing. Wasn't that great? Yes. See if I can find a, my scripture verse here. <laughs> find my glasses first. There we go. Now we're going to uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Okay. No, oh, it's the first Timothy. Come on now. There it is. Second Timothy. I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, Amen. and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. May God add his blessing to the reading yes. of his word. Well, we're going to be looking in a few minutes here in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. But I've got a little something to say about moms here that uh, someone gave me this morning to read. And it says you know you're really a mom when you count the sprinkles on each kid's cupcake to make sure they're equal. You want to take out a contract on the kid who broke your child's favorite toy and made him or her cry. Here you go. You only have time to shave one leg at a time. You hide in the bathroom to be alone. You consider finger paint to be a controlled substance. You mastered the art of placing food on a plate without anything touching. I remember that. Your child insists that you read Once Upon a Potty out loud in the lobby of the doctor's office, and you do it. You hire a sitter because you haven't been out with your husband in ages. Then you spend half the night talking about and checking on the kids. You know that one well, too. You hope that ketchup is a vegetable because it's the only one your child will eat. <laughs> Here's a good one. You can't bear the thought of your son's first girlfriend and you hate the thought of his wife even more. <laughs> That's good. You, can, you know you're a real mom when you can't bear to give away baby clothes because it's so final. You hear your mother's voice coming out of your mouth when you say, not in your good clothes. You stop criticizing the way your mother raised you. Oh, that's so good. That comes home to roost, don't it? And you say at least once a day, I'm not cut out for this job, but you know you wouldn't trade it for anything. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Do you realize that that commandment is the only commandment of God that has a promise attached to it? If you honor your father and your mother, your days will be long upon the land which the Lord your God giveth thee. Giving honor 
to your mom is not only a good idea, it's a commandment from God. And more particularly, if your mom is a godly mom, this applies even more. Matter of fact, the laws for moms were so strict in Exodus 21, 15 through 17, he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be put to death. He that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. God put so much emphasis on that, on moms, that it was a capital crime to abuse them. Leviticus 19.3 says, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Let me say this to moms. When you, you hear that word that says that your children ought to fear you, and you, that maybe, feel, maybe you feel a little unsettled when you hear that. Let me say this though, moms. You were not called to be a buddy to your children. You won't. You were not, you were called to be a parent. And God wants you to be an authority figure for your children. God wants you to set the boundaries and he wants you to discipline your child when they cross that boundary. And believe it or not, that's what the child really wants. They want to know, how far can I go? I found out how far I could go a few times when I was coming up and I didn't go no further, I can tell you. But a mom is to be an authority figure. In Judges 14, in verse 3, this was the parents of Samson speaking. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you go take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Oh boy, here we go. I'm going to meddle a little bit now. Here Samson's mother wanted him to marry a woman from people that agreed with, their, with them. This was not a, a race thing, but a spiritual thing. Moms, encourage and teach your children to, to only date and marry Christians. Let me say that again. Moms, encourage and teach your children to only date and only marry Christians. And if you don't think that matters, ask somebody that married an unbeliever. and They'll be glad to share that with you. Yeah. It is so important that you encourage them to associate with the right people. In 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, went unto King Solomon to speak unto him. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself to her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on the right hand and she said, I desire one small petition of you, I pray thee, uh, say not, no, do not say no to me. And the king said unto her, Ask on, my mother, for I will not say no. Your mother should be treated like a queen. And you should always have a special place of honor for her. On the Monday nights when I would have the family over to eat, when my mother was able, I always let her sit at the head of the table. All the way at the end because mama still had something to say. <laughs> and you should honor your mother. Your mother should be treated like that, especially one that loves the Lord. 1 Kings 3.27 we see where these two women came to Solomon. Each of them had a baby. One of the babies accidentally died during the night and now the two women were arguing over whose baby was who and they brought the baby to Solomon for him to decide and, and, and he took a sword and he said, since you can't make up your mind who it is, I'm going to cut this baby in half and give half to each of you. And one of them said, that would be fine. And the other one said, no, give it to her, give it to her, let the baby live. And Solomon said, that's the mother right there, let her have the child. Right. <laughs> Only a real mother would give up her child in order for it to live. That's how a mother feels toward their child. Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. That's where the law gets laid down in the home usually is through mama. 
And that's been going on for centuries. Remember the laws of God that your mother taught you and do not forsake them. And one day you will have to admit that mama was right. Oh, I ate that so good one time. I was about, I don't know, 19, 20 years old, and I come creeping in the house about 2 o'clock in the morning, and there sat Mama in the living room. And I said, why in the world are you still sitting up? She said, because I wanted to make sure you were all right. And I said, I'm a grown man. (laughs) Don't ever tell your Mama that. You will live to regret that. And she said, you don't understand and you won't understand until you have children. And I stuck my chest out and I said, I will never do that. (laughs) I was talking to mom a couple of days ago and I said, mama, the last good night's sleep I had was the night before my first child was born. That's it. And I've got children in their 30s and 20s now. And I still, even though some of them are married and they're not living at the house, I still don't see a minute's peace when they go out of town till I know they're all right. It ain't never going to change. Forget it. It ain't never going to change. Proverbs chapter 10, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son, makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. And I'm telling you, listen to this, folks. If your mom is still around, nothing grieves a mother worse than a child who lives foolishly. It, nothing grieves them worse. It, it, it just destroys a mom when they see that. Proverbs 15, 20, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. A wise child will bring joy to his parents, and only a fool would despise a mother. Proverbs 19, 26, it says, he that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causes shame and brings reproach. Young people particularly listen to what I got to say here. This is the truth. Your mom bears your reproach because everybody looks at mama and says, what, what happened to him? What happened to her? Your mom will bear your shame when you go. Nobody lives to themselves. You go out and get ignorant and do stupid things and your mama bears that punishment. Getting quiet in here now, and I like that. I'm, people are listening to me. It's true though. Here's one that the modern psychologist and the modern psychiatrist and the Dr. Benjamin Spock adherents do not like. But it's Bible. Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. Mm, 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 mm. Mama, correct your child. Correct your children. That was a visitor from a neighboring church that came in here one night for a gospel saying. And the lady was dressed to the nines when she came in and she had like four little children walking behind her like soldiers. Oldest one couldn't have been no more than seven, eight years old. They sat right back there where Mary's at. She brought a switch in with her. Yes, she did. She set that switch on the pew beside her and them children sat up right and the moment that they started to slouch and fidget, she reached down and reached for that switch and they snapped to attention. I wanted to bring her in here for a parenting class. Moms, correct your children. Raise your child. Don't let the school and the television raise them or else you're going to get a monster. You raise your children. You tell them what your expectations are and what your rules are. And spend time with your child. Or your child will bring you shame. Proverbs 31.1, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that what? That his mother taught him. I'm going to say this for moms. My mother taught me this when I was little. 
and it's an old expression, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Mothers literally rule the world. Behind every great king and every great ruler and every great leader is a good mama. And behind every rotten one is a rotten mama. That's usually the fact. That's usually the fact. Because mom is the one that raises the child to know right from wrong. And my mother always said that the best thing you can give your child is a conscience. Mm. Said that the best vacation in the world is a guilt trip. (laughs) That sounds old fashioned. But if you teach your children to be ashamed when they do wrong, they'll be ashamed when they're grown when they do wrong and they'll stop it. That's a fact. Isaiah 66, 13, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Let's all admit it. There ain't nothing like the comfort of mama when you need it. Many of us miss that. But many of us also remember that. Matthew chapter 14, there was a bad mama. She was the mother of a young girl named Herodias who was sent to dance and seduce a king. And when he watched her, he lusted after her. And he said, ask me of anything and I'll give it to you up to half of my kingdom. That was a stupid man to start with, but that was a man. And the mother had already primed that daughter, said, I want the head of John the Baptist delivered to me on a plate. And she did it. And look at the damage that a bad mama can do. Think about that. Mamas, you just don't realize how important you are. I don't think you do a lot of times, but you are you are so important and God has such He puts you up on such a pedestal and He and He has so, so many restrictions because He wants Mama to do what is right. Because everything hinges. Let's just face it, when Mama goes bad, everything goes bad. Yes, it does. John chapter 2 and verse 5, his mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a wise woman. She knew who her son was. And she knew what he could do. And she supported and she believed in her son. That's the mark of a good mom. My mom did always supported me and always backed me except in one thing and I thought it was so odd. When I went and told my mom that I was going to be a minister, she smiled and she said, well, that's real nice. Never once did she give me any encouragement to do it for the time that I was struggling to get into ministry. And I would make a comment to her and she would smile and say, well, that's nice, son. But she never would say anything negative or positive about it. Until finally I went through all of the persecution to get there on the night that I was finally ordained to the ministry. Then she came up to me and she said, I'm so proud of you and I'm 100% behind you and support you. And I said, why didn't you do that before? She said, because the world has enough mama called preachers. Mm. That was a surprise. But that was wisdom right there. In John chapter 19, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, he was being crucified at the time, the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. And even in in death, Jesus, knowing the value of a mother, made sure that she was taken care of. And it's our duty as children to always see to that with our moms. Then in Acts chapter 4, it said, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And we see here that a real mom has a faith that endures. Moms, you cannot be wishy-washy. 
and, and be a real mom. You've got to be solid in front of your children. You've got to make your stand in what you believe in front of your children. And you have got to live it. You know who can pick out a hypocrite faster than anybody else? Your child. Don't you hate that? They can. They can spot one a mile away and you better live what you say in front of them. And we see that Mary did. And then there was a scripture that John read earlier in 2 Timothy chapter 1. And Paul is talking to Timothy and he said, and this is a young preacher, Timothy. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother and in your mother, I am persuaded that it is in you also. We see here where Timothy's mom and Timothy's grandmom trained him in the faith. You know, it was only after I had earned a doctorate degree in theology did I realize that my mom had as much knowledge of the word as any pastor did. I found out some of the stuff she was teaching me when I was a kid was stuff in the master's program. And I asked her, I said, how did you know all of that? And she said, I went to church every time the door was open and I had good Sunday school teachers. They were pretty advanced back then. <laughs> so moms, I would say this. Teach your children. Get your children in the house of God and bring them regularly and let them see you pray. Let them see you read the Bible. Let them see you serve God and let them see you put great importance on worshiping because they will imitate you. Your children watch everything you do. I'll never forget one time when I was in the sheriff's department, I was going out for the evening to do something and I, I did my normal thing as back when my hair was a little bit longer, I stood in front of the mirror and I kind of slicked it back and I took my 45 and I pulled the slide back to make sure it was good, stuck it in the back of my pants, put a jacket on and out the door I went. But before I did that, I saw my oldest son step up on a thing, look in the mirror, do his hair, take a plastic 45 out and stick it in the back of his pants. <laughs> He carries a real one now, all right? But kids imitate. They watch you and mama, it is so important because you are probably the one that spends more time with them than anything else. Teach them what is right. Raise them up in the Lord. The most important thing you can do is to tell your child about Jesus. Never mind the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and all that other stuff. You tell your child the truth and you tell them who Jesus is and the importance of accepting him as Lord and Savior. In closing, we've got the Mother's Creed I want to read to you that is really, really good for each mom to follow. I will worry less about my children and trust God more. That's going to be the hardest thing you will ever do. I will commit them into the Lord's care. I will love my children unconditionally and let them know I do. I will believe in them constantly and encourage them often. I will pray for them daily. I will teach them responsibility for their own actions. I will try to be an example of godliness, but I will be unafraid to let them see my faults. I will give them generous doses of laughter interspersed with fun. I will release them when they are grown, but they will always be my own. Little boy was sitting in elementary school one day and the teacher was trying to give one of those apples and oranges math problems. And she told the little boy, she said, if your mama had six apples and she was going to divide them between her and you, how many would each of you get? And the little boy said, I would get four and mama would get two. And the teacher said, you don't know your math. And the little boy said, you don't know my mama. <laughs> 
Proverbs 31, 28. We close with this. Her children arise up and call her blessed. We say good job to all the moms who try to raise their children in the nurture, the admonition of the Lord. Shall we bow for prayer? Moms, we salute you. And we admit publicly that being a mom is the hardest job in the world. And in order to do that job, you need the Lord in your life. You need to serve him with all your heart. You've got little children, many of you, that are looking at you to see what you are going to do and how you're going to do it. And you need strength that only comes from God. Maybe you're grown and your children are grown and, and you're trying to live the best you can for the Lord in front of them and you need his help as well. Maybe you want to become a mom one day. You're not a mom now, but you want to dedicate your life to the Lord and live for him so you'll be the right kind of mom. Maybe... Even you've come in here and it doesn't matter who you are, boy or girl, man or woman, and you've never given your life to Christ today. We're going to ask you to come and do that in just a moment. But having said that, I'm going to ask if we can have a couple of our prayer warriors to come down here and stand in case somebody needs prayer. And we're going to have a song of invitation. I would ask if everyone would stand. And if you have a spiritual need of any kind today, in the last moments of this service, would you come?